it's sitting on its track. Ugh. It's an absolute disaster. So. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not remembering how this snowmobile looked when we pulled it out of the woods or what the deal is. But, um, so I had an absolute nightmare trying to get this track on. First I tried to do it when it was up on the sawhorses and I couldn't do it. So then I took the crane, brought the machine down on the floor, tipped it over on its side, and then I could get the track in. It worked good. Got the drive shaft in the front, stuffed the track up into the tunnel, and realized the track is too long. I have absolutely no idea how that happened. Um, the wife kind of explained it to me a little bit, and maybe it makes sense. Um, I, I took 14 inches out of the tunnel. I, I cut the middle 14 inches wide, threw it away, and welded it back together. I then proceeded to take 14 inches out of the track, thinking that it should just match right up. But it was, it was long. It was like, well, here. It was this long. So she said, I wonder if you should have taken 14 inches out of the top of the track and out of the bottom and then joined them back together. I'm like, yeah, I wonder. I don't know. I didn't sit and dwell on it too much. I just nipped out. What I did is I had ended up flipping the whole machine on its top. And I put all the bogey wheel suspension in. I put the rear axle in. I put the um, rear suspension in, which is just coil springs. Buttoned everything up. And then I took ratchet straps hooked them into the slots on the track and ratcheted the track tight. And that's how much it overlapped, that piece. So I ended up having to cut that much out of it, reattach the track to that piano hinge coupling thing I made. And now she's tight. I didn't want suspension in the back because I was afraid if I hit a bump, the track would bottom out on the tunnel and the studs would rip the tunnel. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, I put the suspension on the stiffest spring setting there was and it definitely wouldn't be an issue. But what it did is it jacked the back of the snowmobile up like a 1986 Camaro in a college or in a high school kid's hands. So the whole machine is tilted forward. Now, like I said, this goes back to when we pulled this out of the woods. I remember it sitting flat. All these vintage sleds don't have a rake to them. They, they sit flat. So for the life of me, when I lowered it down on the track, um, it dove right on its nose. It does it right now. I've got it held up by a jack stand right now, so it's somewhat level. But yeah, it... it with the weight of the engine on here and the battery all up towards the front, it literally stands on its nose and the rear of the track is off the ground. Pushing down on the handlebars doesn't help. That ain't gonna work. There's nothing I can do about it. I thought for a few seconds, I thought, okay, well, if I, if I do a, a drop in the rear, take the springs out, tuck the axle uh, brackets that hold the axle, the rear axle, tuck those up into the tunnel and bolt that solid so it can't go up or down, that should do it. Nope. That front pitch in the track where the track comes around the last set of bogies and then curls up to the main drive gear, which is a lot higher up on the tunnel than that rear axle is. That's, it causes, the, and then a 65 pound engine on the front plus a battery, it literally stands on its, on its nose. So, 
I have no choice. And, and then I realized, I started thinking, well, why is it doing that? I mean, I've got my engine sitting on the engine pads where the original engine was. Why is it diving on its nose? And then it dawned on me. The whole front of the machine was being supported by that big pan and the skis. That's what kept everything level. Cut the whole front of the machine off, toosh, stands right on its nose. So, I have no choice. Um, I have to use those outrigger skis that I bought. I'm so glad I did. Um, Tim was giving me a lot of shit about it, but I'm glad I, I bought them. I'm gonna have to use them um, and fabricate a mount system uh, just to keep the front of the machine off the from nose diving into the snow. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. I got the machine up on a jack, on a floor jack, kind of. Uh, So it's sitting on the track. Um, the track's all curly because of the because of the cleats and the studs, but it's sitting on the track right now, and it's at about the level that I want it. I want it tipped slightly back like that. Um, and those skis are going to have to literally hold up the weight of the machine. So the plan is to tuck the skis as close in to the to the tunnel as I can and fabricate some big beefy down legs spindles to uh to hold the skis on i took the wear rods out of the skis because i don't want this thing to have straight line traction i want it to if i want to turn flat i want the skis to slide so the skis are nothing but just bare plastic but I'm really glad now that I pulled the trigger on these powder skis. Um, because not only is it gonna give me stability on the machine, because it is sitting a little high, um, it doesn't take much for me to grab the handlebars and, and tip it right over on its side. And I was afraid of that. But these skis will prevent that from happening. And uh, hopefully will um, still allow me to carve in deep snow. And they'll definitely act like jack stands and, and keep the machine up off the ground. That's the angle I want it at right now. Slightly up in the front nose. That way this ramp that I made will be pushing the snow down under the machine. In addition to the nose of the skis will be doing the same thing. Um, yeah, I think it's going to work great. But 